Hello all. Today we're going to discuss how to create cover letters. Specifically, we are going to examine the content differences between resumes and cover letters, what specific content should be included in the cover letter, and why company research is important during the job search process. In addition to creating a customized resume, you will also need to create a customized cover letter when applying to positions. Together, these materials constitute your job search documents, each of which serves a distinct function. The resume offers an opportunity to provide a comprehensive list of all your experiences, or, in other words, to give your employer an idea of the breadth of your experience. The purpose of the cover letter, however, is different. Within the cover letter, you should provide a detailed discussion of two characteristics that you possess and document them through nuanced examples. Together, between these two documents, an employer can come to an understanding of both the breadth and depth of your experiences. The cover letter's ultimate purpose, then, is to help secure an interview. Within the cover letter, there are three avenues that help us achieve this end. First, the cover letter offers an opportunity to provide an in-depth discussion of your strengths. By focusing on the depth of your experience, the cover letter focuses on information that is distinct from what you have provided in the resume. Secondly, the cover letter offers an opportunity to demonstrate your knowledge of the company. By conducting company research and including that research within the cover letter, you can show that you are enthusiastic about the potential to work for that specific company. Finally, the cover letter offers you an opportunity to showcase your writing. Regardless of the field you are pursuing, the ability to communicate clearly and effectively through writing will be important, and the cover letter provides an opportunity to demonstrate this skill. When writing a cover letter, there are several technical requirements that must be adhered to. First, we need to ensure that we use business letter format, which we will discuss in the subsequent slides. We should also be sure that we use 12-point font and that the margins are 1 inch or less. In addition to properly formatting the document, we also need to ensure that the content is appropriate. Within a cover letter, we should have the following sections. A salutation, an introductory paragraph, two body paragraphs, each of which should provide a detailed documentation of one characteristic that you possess, a conclusion, and a closing. Let's begin by considering business letter formatting. Within a business letter, we will begin by providing our name and address. We will follow this information with the date when we will send the letter. After the date, we will provide the company's name and address, which will be followed by a salutation. When writing the salutation, we should avoid addressing the letter to to whom it may concern. As we are trying to create a customized cover letter, addressing it generically undercuts our goal. If you do not know who will be reviewing the letter, you can call the company and ask for the name of the individual who is conducting the search. If an individual receives two applications, one that is addressed generically and one that is personalized, the personalized application already possesses an advantage. This brings us to the introduction of a cover letter. As we discuss the introductory paragraph of the cover letter, we will examine it sentence by sentence in order to identify what content should be included. The first sentence reads as follows. When researching career opportunities on Glassdoor.com on January 9th, your advertisement for a long-term care pharmacist position immediately caught my attention. This sentence is an excellent example of what should be immediately addressed within the introduction. Specifically, there are three pieces of information that must be included. First, we should indicate how we heard about the job. Here, the individual came across the job on a popular website. If you heard about the job in a different manner, such as through a colleague or in a newspaper, we should provide that information here. This first sentence also indicates when the job was found. This information not only indicates your level of interest in the position, that is, how quickly you applied upon finding the job, but also provides a means by which companies can monitor their job ads. If you have applied to a job that is no longer available, this information allows the HR representative to discontinue an ad that may have slipped through the cracks. Finally, the first sentence of the introduction should identify the specific job title of the position to which you are applying. 
Large companies often have multiple job openings at once. Indicating the specific position that interests you helps to ensure that your materials are considered for that specific position. Let's now consider the second sentence of the introduction. According to CVS's website, the primary goal of your pharmacy is to help people on their journey to a healthier lifestyle. Within the introduction, it is important to demonstrate that you have done company research. By customizing your cover letter and including company research, you are putting a personal touch on your materials that many job applicants will overlook. Including company research also indicates that you are interested in and enthusiastic about working for this specific company. In order to find relevant information to include, examine the company's About Us or History page. Once you have found applicable information, you should identify and incorporate distinctive phrases that an employee will immediately recognize. This inclusion of research will help to differentiate you from other applicants. This brings us to the final sentence of the introduction. In order to better the lives of your customers, I would like to contribute my years of training in pharmacy school and my compassionate customer service skills which will allow me to professionally manage CVS's staff while offering exceptional healthcare services to your customers. This final sentence of the introduction serves as the thesis statement or summary of the cover letter, and as such, it should include two pieces of information. First, it should identify two skills or qualities that you possess. In the body of the cover letter, we will create two paragraphs, one for each skill, and provide an in-depth discussion that documents our possession of that particular skill. Secondly, our thesis statement should emphasize how our skills can benefit the company. As with the career objective in the resume, it is important that we be as specific as possible. Here the individual has stated that his skill will allow him to professionally manage CVS's staff while offering exceptional healthcare services to its customers. When crafting our thesis statement, we should attempt to reach a similar level of specificity. As you can see, there is a significant amount of information that needs to be included within the introduction. Providing this information in a clear and succinct manner will take a significant amount of time and effort. However, a strongly written introduction will impress your reader and prompt him or her to proceed to your body paragraphs. Within the body paragraphs, we should provide a detailed, in-depth discussion of the characteristics that we mentioned within the thesis statement. Here, the author begins in the following manner. Creating an enjoyable, simple, and accessible experience for your customers requires that pharmacists be knowledgeable and efficient. Within this thesis statement, the author indicated that his years of training in pharmacy school was one important characteristic that he possessed. Within this paragraph, the author immediately mentions this characteristic again by discussing his knowledge. Within our own writing, we should follow this example by composing strong topic sentences. These topic sentences should indicate the characteristic that you will focus on in the paragraph. This author has also chosen to incorporate some distinct wording from the company website. Remember that company research is important. Sprinkling it throughout the cover letter is an excellent way to differentiate yourself from the competition. However, the best way to distinguish yourself is to document your possession of a skill through nuanced descriptions of experiences that you have had. Here, the author has provided a detailed account of the experiences he has had. These experiences provide an opportunity for him to document his educational and training experiences in depth. Throughout my educational and training experiences, I have had the opportunity to expand my knowledge of pharmacy practices and management principles. At South Dakota State University's Doctor of Pharmacy School, I had the opportunity to prepare, fill, and dispense over 2,000 prescriptions to patients, while simultaneously ensuring the cost-effectiveness of the prescriptions and patient safety. Through these experiences, I was able to hone my managerial skills such as keeping an account of inventory and supervising the work of interns. It is important to remember that the cover letter's purpose differs from that of the resume. While the resume provides a breadth of experiences, the cover letter should provide an in-depth look at one characteristic. 
As we compose our paragraphs, we should work on thoroughly documenting any experiences that have led us to the development of this specific skill. Finally, we come to the last sentence of the paragraph. Given my education and training, I believe that I would be able to create an exceptional experience for CVS customers that would further contribute to the company's stellar reputation. Within our own cover letter, we should create a similar concluding sentence. This sentence should restate the paragraph's characteristic and emphasize how those qualities can benefit the company. By ending the paragraph on how your qualities or characteristic can benefit the company, you can inherently make a strong argument for your application. By keeping these concepts in mind, we can provide a clearly written and persuasive argument that we are the ideal candidate for the position. The second body paragraph will follow the same organizational path as the first. We will begin with a strong topic sentence that indicates the paragraph's characteristic, provide an in-depth discussion that documents our possession of that characteristic, and create a conclusion that restates the paragraph's characteristic and emphasizes how that characteristic can benefit the company. The only difference between these two paragraphs will be that within the second body paragraph, you will need to provide a transition within the topic sentence. This transition should move your reader from the topic of the previous paragraph to the topic of the current paragraph. Here the author has tacked on an introductory element. In addition to honing my knowledge of pharmaceuticals, moves the reader from the previous paragraph's topic to the topic of this paragraph. Aside from this minor addition, the expectations for the first and second body paragraphs are the same. This brings us to the conclusion of the cover letter. Within the conclusion, we should begin by directing the reader to the resume. By mentioning the resume within the conclusion of the cover letter, we create a path that prompts the reader to examine our resume. Also, please note that we are encouraging the reader to examine our resume, not our resume. The accent marks are important. We should also make sure that our conclusion restates the characteristic discussed in the body paragraphs. By re-emphasizing our characteristics, we lend coherence to the cover letter and provide a reminder of how our unique qualities fit the job. We should also provide a phone number and optimal times to call. This motivates action on part of the company. Finally, and most importantly, we need to genuinely thank the reader for his or her time. Small kindnesses can go a long way in displaying a person's character. Thanking the reviewer indicates that you are an appreciative and considerate individual. By following these guidelines, we can create a strong conclusion to our cover letter. The final section of the cover letter is the closing. After a closing word, include your signature and beneath it, your typed name. By following these guidelines, we can create an exceptionally strong cover letter that helps differentiate us from the other job candidates.